This is Casa Spin with Marty, Tara, and Anton Danny Luck. With the Laser and Skin Clinic, experts in the field of aesthetics and body treatments. Hey, it's Tara Walsh here, and this is Casa Spin with the Laser and Skin Clinic, award winning experts in the field of aesthetics and body treatments. I'm here with Anton and Danny Luck to chat all things Love Island and to share our opinions on this week's episode. Marty Guilfoyle isn't here at the moment, but Anton, we're going to have a bit of fun. We are going to have a little bit of fun. You look a little bit lonely there, but we're going to have loads of fun today. We don't need Marty. We I won't know. tell him that. We I am that. lonely. I'm going to, like, it's so strange being on my own here. You need to get over here. Yeah, it's done. Done. And I, I was... will come over. After this week, Marty won't have a job. Have we told you that? Yeah, I know. I'm I... coming over taking his job. Yeah, you're going to take over his 10 spin hits in a row show. I'll show you everything. Don't worry. <laughs> we got this. Um, also, so, like, I feel it. like every week you're in a new place. Where are you at the moment? I'm finally back in the UK. I'm yeah. back home for the first time in seven months. Um, yeah, literally been back two days now. Um, did my quarantine over in Mallorca. And it's just strange, like, just... Even the other day, I drove on the wrong side of the road. Yesterday, oh, yeah. last night, I drove on the, the right. The left side or the right side? And my mate was like, Anton, you're not in Dubai anymore. What oh, are you doing? No. I was like, shit. Oh, no. I didn't I know, know that. So, wait. You, saw, you, you drive know, on the left know. side in the UK? We drive on the left side, yeah. yeah when so you we actually were... think about it, like, you don't actually know. You're like, what, what side of the road do I drive on? No, but, yeah, that... left side in the UK, right side in Dubai. No, that would freak me out as well. I'd definitely be going on to the wrong side of the road. Um, so, like, you, the first week yeah. you were in Dubai, the second week you were in Mallorca, yes. this week <laughs> you're in Scotland. Where are we going to be next week? Ireland next to you, I told yes. you. Yes! 100%. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I wanted to hear. Okay, let's get to Love Island. This is actually starting to get a little bit juicy. I know I say that every week. I feel like this year it is a bit slow. I wanted to pick up a bit. So they've sent Teddy yeah. into the villa. What do you think of Teddy? Wow. What a specimen wow. of a man. Wow. Yeah, just wow. <laughs> like, it just, do you know what? He came in, he looked the part, he said all the right things. Yeah. He came in with a bang. That is what a bombshell is. Yeah, and you know, he's really like chill. I, I quite like him, but he had to go on dates with four girls in there. I mean, he must be feeling so powerful walking into this villa and being able to go on four dates. Have you, yeah. did you, you got that text before Ar Arabella when she came in. What's it like getting that text that you're, you've been chosen? Yeah, it's, um, it's obviously very nice. Um, I think that especially when you have been one of the people that hasn't been getting a lot of attention or you've not been coupled up, um, then when you do finally get that text, it's just like almost a relief as well. And then you just want to go in and like show the best version of yourself. So I can imagine like some of the girls, as you've seen, were absolutely buzzing to, to go on their dates. Yeah, they were. But it's kind of like, it's a little bit awkward, isn't it? Because you're, you're, you know you're in competition with your mates. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it is, how would I explain it? Yeah, because you kind of want them to find the right person, yeah. but then you want to find the right person, so it is hard. But I'll always remember when Arabella came in, for example, uh, me and Danny were very good friends in the villa, and it was one day that I seen the two talking to each other by the fire pit, and I just looked at them both, and I think it's even caught on camera, and I said... The two of them just look perfect together. Uh -huh. And I just thought, you know what? Like, you, you can, Sometimes it's just better for your friends to have it. But that's what, that's what they're in there for. They're, they're in there to find the right person. So you just have to, have to go with it and see who suits who the best. Yeah, exactly. That's it. And uh, to be honest with you, though, I feel like the dates are a little bit boring at the moment. I want the big extravagant. You got on a helicopter. I want something like that to happen. Does it, but that kind of happens yeah. at the end, doesn't it? Yeah. But I also milked a goat before that, so oh, yeah. I deserved my helicopter day. Right? <laughs> like, oh literally, uh, that, that was my first date. My first proper date with Belle was the goat date, and oh. we milked a hairy tit. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. That is the best first date, though. Like, but that's like great, you know. What's the word I'm looking for? Like couples building or whatever, you know. What I'm trying to say, like, that's a great way to break the ice. 
So that's fair play to Love Island yeah, for making know, that one. What? Yeah, it was, it was good fun, actually. And do you know what? When will you ever say that you'll do a date like that ever again? So I can't see myself taking a girl to a farm anytime soon, put it that way. No, that's fair. That's totally fair. And But it might be, a, is it kind of a bit awkward? Because you know that, like, the cameras are all around you. And it's kind of like you were saying about the challenges, how, you know, you're very aware of the cameras. Are you more aware of them on dates? What's going on behind the scenes there? Yeah, the dates are the worst for that, a hundred percent. I mean, even when I went, even if I knew Belle that whole time, like I think I'd barely been in for about a week and a half, two weeks. And I know that doesn't sound like a lot, but it is in there. It really is. And um, when we even went on our dates, we felt awkward with each other because there's certain topics you have to pick up on and then your date will get interrupted so they can say like, right, talk about this or talk about that and it just doesn't flow as naturally as what it flows in the villa so yeah that that I, I didn't enjoy the dates too much to be honest yeah so it's more like it's kind of like you're filming you you're more it's more obvious that you're filming a series or you're filming a show you know with the cameras all around you yeah yeah 100 um, percent. that's 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 one of the times that it does feel like you're you're filming if i'm honest yeah. And did you watch the girls going in and, and doing their, their date with Teddy? Yes, I did. Um, I think that it, it was just so, it was done everything right. I think when they, they walked in, he offered them their drink, he sat them down, he gave them a hug. And um, yeah, I thought that his chats with all four of the girls went well. And it was almost like you didn't know who he was going to choose because they all went that well and I thought he was really calm he was collect and he dealt with every girl in the exact way that was appropriate to their personality so he, he did well he did very well yeah he did he did and you know I actually really liked him with Kaz I thought she was really chill and comfortable but then like Faye was a bit of a devil she was playing footsie with him under the table and then Rachel was a whole other thing she was just she just went for him I don't think I don't think I would have played my cards oh, that way no, she stuck it on him, didn't she? She was factor. She was factor fifty. Absolutely slabbered it on. Um, so yeah, it was it was good to see how he adapted to all the different situations, and I yeah. think he actually did very well. Um, whereas when you see Liam, for example, um, like the way he is, he's just that flirty kind of always talking about sex and he just would do that with every single girl in every single situation whereas I feel Teddy done the sex talk he did the, the cute talk he did the footsie he just yeah actually can I just go in and couple up with Teddy I'm like, look seriously you can you'll have to get through me first because I want to couple up with him he's stunning <laughs> and he's yeah. so oh he's just fabulous um but I really want Kaz he's to find somebody after what happened with Toby. Now, we have to talk about Toby's decision to, you know, move on with Chloe and everything yeah. that happened there. Oh, there's a fly. Uh, everything that happened there. What did you think? Do, do you think he approached it the right way? Because he kissed Chloe on the terrace before he had even kind of called it off with, with Kaz at that point. Yeah, you've kind of answered your, your own question there. Um, he dealt with it terribly. I don't think he could dealt with it worse, actually. So um, I think he should have spoke to Kaz first. He should never have kissed another girl beforehand. Um, I think that he's definitely shown his age as the series is going on. And he's really shown that he doesn't know how to deal with his emotions as well. Um, so, yeah, I don't think he was ever into Kaz either. I think he was just buying his time. Um, which is a shame because I think Kaz dealt with the situation unbelievably and she is probably fastly becoming my favourite girl in there. Yeah, because she didn't freak out and she didn't overreact and she didn't yell at him. She just kept it so cool and she said, OK. But she recognises as well that how he handled it was yeah. so immature. Um, but I suppose when you're kind of in that situation and you're in a villa and everything is so intense... Do you kind of get blinded a bit and you don't know how to handle situations and you don't know what to do and then you kind of fuck up? Yeah, 
A hundred percent. I mean, I, I did it myself with certain situations in there. The the snog party, uh, snog Mary pie challenge. I really messed up with that by kissing Anna. Um, I tried to do something nice because I was trying to kiss Anna, and then I was going to do a, a nice speech to Belle because I wanted to marry her. But yeah, that just did not go down well. Oh my God, <laughs> um, yeah. There was obviously the, the situation. There's certain situations where I think you just make silly mistakes but I think it's obvious to anyone when you're coupled up with someone else especially the type of couple that Kaz and Toby were which was a fairly serious couple if we're honest um, probably the second most serious in the villa at that point and you, you just wouldn't kiss another girl like out with a challenge no, you wouldn't. I, I really don't think he handled it very well, to be honest with you. Um, and then also mm -hmm. afterwards, he yeah. went outside and slept in the day, ba day bed with Chloe. And and then he got up to all sorts under the bed sheets. What's he doing? Like, I just, I was watching it go, you're just not, you're not doing this right. Those day beds outside, how, did you get to sleep in them at all? No, I never, but there was a few times, I think, Curtis and Tommy did and Danny did at one point um, and they just were like, it was terrible the f there was like loads of flies and like the guys had said, it was really hot as well apparently, really really hot so I think everyone only ever does it once, they, I think they like the idea of going out sleeping under the stars in Spain and then they just realise it's just a sweat fest and fly fest so it's just no good. Oh no, not good at all, because I was kind of thinking, I was saying it to our producer Callum earlier on, I was kind of going that would be really nice, like just to sit out in the sun, but when you put it that way, no, thank you. Um, so there was a recoupling nope. in the villa, and yep. Anton, Brad chose to recouple with new girl Lucinda, yeah. and Rachel was dumped from yeah. the villa. What do you think of this whole situation? Yeah. It was always going to happen. It was always going to happen. Um, I think that Brad never liked Rachel. He just wanted to stay in. And I think that was obvious, which is fair. Like, I mean, you're not going to just stand there and just be like, oh, just, I don't like you, I'm just going to leave you. Obviously, he, he played it in a certain way to stay in the villa. Um, but, yeah, I think Lucinda, he did actually, for the first time, genuinely like someone. Um, but how could you not? I mean, wow. 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 Yeah. wow. <laughs> Lucinda, like, that's, that, that, that's not even a bit of me. That's just, like, all of me. Like, that is all of me. So Have I'm very into happy. The DMs? But not yet. Not yet. Wait, a plate cool. Wait till she's out. Okay. You know, I'm. I'm hoping. I want to go in as a bombshell. I'm, I'm standing by this. I want to be a bombshell. Would you actually I want to be a bombshell? <laughs> oh, could you imagine? When, so I think that is a great move. Once someone from the last or two seasons ago or, or any of the old seasons, imagine just throwing them in. It'd be so good. I can't Especially see the most pied islander of all time. Like, you, you've got it, yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. literally. Oh, my God. I'd, I'd go in as a bombshell, and I'd get to choose, and somehow I would still get pied. But <laughs> it's not even possible, but, like, it would happen. <laughs> <laughs> you'd still be sent home. No, not at all. They'd all love you, Anton. I yeah. actually, do you know what? We're, we're going to get this out there. Let's get Anton into the villa. We're right. going to write articles and get this out there. I actually think that would be a great idea. Yeah. I absolutely watch. Do you, do you know anyone uh, on the inside that you could, you know, be like, get me in there? Yeah, I've already tried. Have I was you? like, guys, I'm in New York at any chance. <laughs> I can just pop over. <laughs> what did you do? Like, send an email? No, I got my management to do it. All right, well, yeah. <laughs> Management I don't send my own emails. <laughs> well, are you mad? Yeah. Typing. I I'm just had a manicure. <laughs> and what did they get back to you or anything? Did they say anything? No. no. You're pied by Love Island. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it doesn't get worse than that. The, the producer's pied me now. <laughs> oh, that's so funny. Um, well, I would love to see you in the villa, and I think there's so many other people who would, so I've got your back. Um, okay, so the recoupling. I actually wanted to ask you, when people are dumped from the villa, so Rachel was sent home, how long did she have to get all her stuff and leave? Like, did she have much time to say goodbye? Mm, no, it's, it is literally 20 to 30 minutes max. Wow. It is not long. It is the most... <laughs> Recouplings are like the most savage thing ever. It's just like you, 
you're just like you see the person just leave all the stuff has to get put into a bag straight away straight out and that's it it's it's sad it's really savage really upsetting nights you know that was um, very emotional very emotional nights yeah, yeah yeah i'd say so like it's and you know what it's so emotional to watch like what happened there the other night Lucinda and Brad had to choose between them who had to leave and when Brad decided to go and Jake ran at him and hugged him I actually teared up at home watching yeah. Love Island yeah like yeah those... it's, it's changing as well and so, sorry Tara go no ahead. no go ahead sorry this bloody delay yeah no it's fine um, yeah I just think that it's so genuine as well I, I used to watch Love Island before I did it and I was like how can you cry like you've known this person five minutes like yeah. how how could you like them that much and then I'll always remember my first experience was with Joe that left and me and Joe were very friendly in the villa and when he left it was only two weeks I mean I was I couldn't stop crying like it was just so upsetting and it just felt like I knew him so much longer and yeah it's just it's a journey you go on with the people that you're in there with and it, you, no one else will ever relate to it. Yeah, yeah, totally. I think those friendships that you have with, with the lads and, you know, your actual friendships are just as important. 100%, yeah. Yeah, if not more. Yeah, it's well, so true. I was single most of the time, so more <laughs> personally, but the friendships are the friendships are massive. They're really, really big in there, and you think they're going to last forever, and you know they feel like brothers and sisters, but obviously sometimes it just doesn't end up that way. Yeah, actually, do you speak to any of your former Islanders? Do you speak to Molly or Tommy or any of them? Really? Um, no, I only speak only speak to Anna. That's yeah. it. Oh, yeah, you were quite close with Anna. Yeah, yeah. me and Anna, me, yeah, me and Anna are very close. Yeah. yeah. I, look, I know this isn't the same thing, but I went away for six weeks to Malta once, and I went with like ten other people, and we were all so close for those six weeks, and we were like, we're going to be best friends forever. And yeah. I haven't really like spoken to many of them. It's actually really sad, isn't it? Yeah, it is like that as well, but what you've got to remember with Love Island, and I'm just going to put this out there and I don't care how it sounds, is people come off the show, get their blue tick, get their million followers and go so far up their arse, it's unbelievable, and forget where they came from. So, yeah, for me, for me, it's like that, like you say, is like going on a holiday, meeting a group of friends, and then never speaking again, except for them, it's so much worse than that, because they just yeah. change as a person, so it's not even a person you knew in the first place. So it's quite sad. But at the same time, I always appreciate the, the, the journey that I had with the people in there, no matter yeah. what, because it was unbelievable. Yeah, because you had a great time then. That's all that really matters. Um, well, let's go back to what happened with exactly. Brad and Lucinda. Let's go back there. So these guys, I yes. mean, what a tough decision to make. Fair play to Brad for yeah. being like, Lucinda, stay. I think that was very sound of him. I think there's a bit of a mixed reaction yeah. online about everything that's going on. Some people are saying she should have mm. left. Some people are saying she should have stayed. What's your opinion? Yeah. Do you know what? It's a difficult one, isn't it? Because mm. they did only know each other a week. They literally knew each other a week. Like, let's, let's put this into the grand scheme of things. And I've said it before in many episodes, and I don't care what anyone says. Even Faye, I was watching her. I actually watched this episode this morning, and I was watching Faye being like, how can you say it's for opportunity? We're all in here for love. And I just thought to myself, don't lie. Like, literally don't lie. Like, no one has went on that show just looking for love. I don't care what you say, because why would you go on Love Island looking for love when the relationships that last after it are what, like, 1% if that? So why would you think that you're going to find it on Love Island? There, there is the opportunity that you go in there for. Yes, if you find love, it's a bonus, but it's just... I just don't cut the bullshit, like, at yeah. the end of the day. Like, you're you're not in there just for love. And Lucinda isn't either. She's in there for the opportunity as, yeah. as well. Yeah. And there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with that. And she can't know after a week if she loves someone. Fact. Oh. So, yes, I don't... I think if she did leave, she would just be doing it to look good, basically. Yeah, yeah. And I think, I think like... Brad made such a right choice in saying, look, I have been here for so long. I think it's a good idea for you to stay. Yeah. And, like, he knows. He knows it's all about the opportunity, and that's why he said it. Um, and there is. There's massive opportunities to come from Love Island. So, I mean, you can yeah. understand. If that really annoyed Obviously, me when Faye kicked off. Sorry, go I, ahead. Yeah, because, yeah, I, I agree with what you said there with Faye kicking off. I was just like, don't lie. Like, 
just don't lie. Like, don't go to that extreme to lie and make the girl look bad because she has stayed after knowing a guy for literally a week. And to be fair, the week that she's known him as well, she keeps saying, I fancy him, I fancy him, but then she's like, my conversation with him isn't very good. All he does is talk about himself, it's this and that. So I don't think she was 100% sure on him. And we've all had that, we've all had that girlfriend or boyfriend where you just fancy them, so you just think that they're the best thing since sliced bread. But really, when you deep it, there's nothing more to it. And I think she feels that way totally about Brad. I don't think, I don't think they would have worked on outside anyway. I'm no. just saying that because I really, I really want her. I want her. I want her. <laughs> it would work for you too, though. Um, so I, yeah, I actually, hundred percent. I was thinking of the whole Faye situation and how, like, she just kind of put herself into a situation that had absolutely nothing to do with her. Anton, surely producers were involved in this. What with Faye? Yeah, with Faye, like, taking Sorry. Lucinda aside and chatting to her and saying, look, I think what you did was wrong. Like, why did she get involved? No, I think she was... No, I, I do actually think she was genuinely really? annoyed, but I don't... Yeah, yeah, I don't think the producers have got involved. I think she was annoyed that they said that, but I think she was doing it to show that she's not doing that, if that makes sense. I think yeah. she was trying to be like, yeah, I'm in here for love, like, blah, 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 and make herself look good by kicking off, if that makes sense. I, I really do. I, I just I just don't believe that in... I could be wrong, but I just do not believe you go on Love Island for Love from season four or five upwards. I just don't believe it. No, you don't. That's actually a great point that you said from season four or five upwards, because it kind of just kicked off then. It just became yeah. so big. Um, yeah, that's yeah. interesting. Um, 100%. So I was kind of thinking, Anton, and tell me if anyone's ever done this before or in your year or if you've ever heard of it. So they're doing the big recoupling scene. And say, say for example, yeah. like two people couple up, they sit down, and then a guy is standing. Can he? No, he can't because it hasn't been done. But has anyone ever chosen to recouple with somebody who has just recoupled? They sat already sat down. Yeah. So if someone sat down, they'd recouple with the pair. No, yeah. that, 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 you can't do that. Because that would stir <laughs> no, so the So what plot. actually what? happens? Yeah, but but what actually happens is the producers know they ask you who you're going to couple up with before you actually couple up with them, uh, okay, so right. that they can put it in a certain order. They obviously do it in a certain order. It doesn't just. Do you, do you never just think, oh, that's that's worked out so well? Like, <laughs> yeah. how does it always work out when it's dead dramatic? <laughs> yeah. It doesn't just happen. Like, you need to. They need to know who you're going to couple up with okay, before right. you actually couple up with them. And you always and you always have to make your speech very. Um, so. Yeah, you have to make your speech so the, the audience aren't sure who you're going with. So you couldn't make it really obvious towards one person. You have to make it like, oh, yeah, she's got a great personality, she gets on with everyone in the villa, blah, blah, blah. You know, you can't just, like, go, oh, yeah, like, we get on this way, that the audience go, oh, it's definitely her. Unless it's an obvious choice. Yeah, yeah, that totally makes sense. And and then, like, so so these speeches are always really... I'm always surprised at how you remember your speeches because I'd be like, oh, Fuck, I got that wrong. Can we go again? <laughs> Does that ever happen? Yeah. So, yes. Yeah, so uh, you would always type it out in your phone beforehand, and again show the producers saying um, what you were going to say roughly. And I was always very. I always like to go over it a lot. Like I wanted to make sure that I'd done a really good speech and it came across really well. Um, but there was times where people stood up and they messed up their words so they had to say it again or they were just so nervous. I mean, especially the guys that come in that are new, it's quite difficult for them to come into an environment where, especially towards the end, I started to notice is because they're coming into an environment and they see how famous almost you've got. So they're standing in front of celebrities, even though you don't see yourself as a celebrity at that point, so they get really nervous, um, which I noticed towards the end, which was, was crazy. Um, so yeah, um, if you do mess up, basically they, they will make you do it again. Yeah, I was actually thinking that as well. Like if you come into the villa and you're kind of late in, like how Greg O'Shea say came in that year, like you are famous. Like he hooked yeah. up with a famous person in his head. Like, do you know what I mean? He did. So yeah. I, I, I wonder, did, did, 
they see the buzzing outside. Yeah, they see the buzzing outside, so they know how big you actually are. And I'll always remember, like, they're not meant to tell you. Like, yeah. if anyone comes in, they shouldn't tell you anything. They'll get in real trouble if they do. And I'll always remember, I think it was week four, um, or week three, Tom came in, and he was like, mate, you are the national treasure. Everyone loves you. And I went, I went what? Like, I just didn't. I was like, he was like, he's like, honestly, everyone loves you in the UK. Like, it's you're the national treasure. And it was just like, nah, like, nah. And it, it was obviously that was the case at that point. So it was really, it was nice to know. Oh my god, you must. And that's why really... going on to obviously a different topic. Oh, I was buzzing because obviously I, I, I felt like. I couldn't couple up. I felt embarrassed because I was I was getting pied all the time. I did genuinely feel embarrassed. And when I say that, it never happened to me before. I wasn't just saying it. I'd never really been pied before. Like, I don't know yeah. what happened. <laughs> but it, it did. It did. And, um, yeah, uh, when he came in and said that, it just gave me uh, that push on, I think, that I needed at that point. So it was uh, nice. That's really, really nice. And did he get in trouble for telling you that? No, so we always had a thing when our mics were off in the pool over by the far side and you would always get away with Aww. certain conversations. A nice one. Um, I also, we were talking about being you pied. Out, you figure out all sorts. Yeah, that's, that's fantastic. Yeah. Uh, we were talking about getting pied and there's a lot of complaints at the moment. I read a report about how complaints have been made to Ofcom over how Hugo was treated in that challenge. Do you remember when all the girls cho chose different guys and he wasn't chosen at all? Did you watch that? Yeah, yeah, but look, Hugo's just coming across, I think there's one guy every year, or girl every year, I think it was Dr. Alex the year before me, then it was of me, my year, and then it's Hugo this year, there's always that guy, and it always seems to be the nice guy, that's friendly with everyone, and I don't think the girls would have meant it intentionally, they just could never see themselves probably kissing Hugo, or, you know, it wouldn't have been intentional at all, because they just see him as, they probably like Hugo the best, didn't they? Yeah. That's the thing, they probably yeah. get on with him the best, they see him as a brother, but then they just couldn't imagine, like, touch you know, or having to kiss them or anything so that's probably oh why God. it wasn't chose. Yeah, no it's true No, it's just the way it is Yeah. So. Um, we were talking about your mics and taking your mics off and stuff there are so many different reports going around like some islanders, former islanders should I say, have said that they had days off, others were like we barely had a day off, what's the story with this, will you set it straight Yeah, so there was one day off a week, always one day off a week where either the girls and boys would be separated, and then on alternate weeks, one group would stay in the villa, and the other group would go to a casting villa. And the casting villa is where the bombshells would go before they come in. And um, So you would go there for the day, you could listen to music, because what you guys don't realise is we're not, no music's allowed. We weren't allowed to talk any story at all, so you're not allowed to be like, I I couldn't go to Michael, oh, how are you and Amber getting on? We had to, like, just talk about, like, the outside world. Whereas you can't talk about the outside world when you're in there. So it was great because it was like, me and the boys could just be like, the football, the boxing. Like, obviously, we could say stuff that we couldn't say in the villa, maybe talking sexually or other stuff. Oh. Um, so, yeah, it was, it was, the days were always always good fun as well. And you got, um, you could eat what you wanted the days as well. So they're bringing like maybe McDonald's or you could order whatever food you wanted the days. So, yeah, it was nice, nice days. Lovely. You need that, though. You absolutely need that. And you were meant, you mentioned the football there. So the, the group this year actually were given the chance to watch the football. What do you think of that? Because I know that they're very strict in there. Yeah, I was very surprised at that because I know even, I think it was the year before me, the the England were in the World Cup semi-finals and the boys weren't allowed to know anything and they were really, really um, gutted about that. So I'm, I'm shocked that they actually allowed that this year. I really am. Yeah, I was surprised too. I think everyone was because we know how, how strict they are from what former Islanders have said. Um, also, like, was there anything yeah. that you were you requested that you were given or did you pester them and say, please, I need this one item? Um, my main thing for me was initially at the start, they were doing like a, what was it? It was a no meat Friday. 
Um, and me and Michael, we obviously came in, we were the gym guys in there, and we were training hard the full time. And we were like, you can't not give us like meat for a day. Like that's not that's not fair. Like yeah. we don't we don't tell you guys to have a meat only day. So they were just trying to be like <laughs> vegan friendly and things like that. So that was just that was just one day I said literally, and if you're a vegan or a vegetarian, don't listen to this. I was like, if you do not give me meat that day, I'm going <laughs> in that field and eating that sheep. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, that's so fun. like so so is that the only thing you requested i would have been asking for so many things like can i get a tv please my main thing <laughs> is yeah yeah my main thing was probably i always wanted to chewing gum in but you weren't allowed you were never allowed chewing gum because when you film like chewing like it doesn't look very good when you're talking um but i managed to get one of the casting um not one of the runners i got on with really well because i would like clean the dishes and stuff like that so they didn't have to yeah. and then i was like just bring some chewing gum and they would always bring me in a bit of chewing gum so that was good yes yeah, nice it's all about who you know it's actually like it's those people as well it's the runners it's it's like the cleaners and everything they're the people you want to know in buildings because they've got the in to everything i've learned this <laughs> A hundred percent, hundred percent. And was there anybody else in the villa who requested things and got them, or was there any any behind the scenes stuff you can spill the beans on? Um, I'll always remember when Ovi came in. He wanted to leave quite quickly after he came in, oh. and he just. I mean, I know everyone always. I know everyone always goes on about Ovi oh, must have been a good laugh and he must have been this, and he was a really nice guy, but he just went away and done his own thing all the time. And um, he wanted to leave after about a week, I would say, if that, maybe even less. And he was like, look, I need to, I need to, I'm missing my basketball, I'm missing this, blah, blah, blah. So they ended up putting out, side for him, outside the main entrance, a basketball net. And at lunchtime, he was allowed to go and play basketball because obviously they knew how popular Obi was on the outside. Yeah. And uh, they gave him what he wanted, effectively. And he just need, yeah. I, I think suppose- it's how, po- I'm not going to lie, I think it's how popular you are as well. Like, I think if they know that you're loved, then they'll, they'll do a lot bit more for you than if you were basically just an extra in there. So that's how you know that you, you're, unfortunate you're doing well is. outside. Yeah. And yeah, I wonder, so, so if Ovi was trying to leave, was he with anyone at the time? Because I, if I was India, I'd be like, you're leaving for a basketball. No. What about me? <laughs> No, 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 it wasn't. If you remember, Ovi really struggled at the start as well to couple up with yeah. anyone. So this was way before India came in, oh, um, okay. probably, because I think India maybe came in about two two weeks later or whatever it was. Yeah, I think it was, actually. All right, let's move on to the next section. Let's do this. What the fuck of the week? What the fuck of the week? This is the part of the show where we chat about all the crazy things that happened during the week on Love Island, all the things that made us go, what the fuck? This is my favourite part because I get to say fuck really loud and I'm on the radio and I'm not allowed to say fuck, <laughs> but I can say fuck here. Fuck. Anton, anything that you noticed during the week? That was... say, f- say fuck one more time. Fuck! <laughs> fuck. <laughs> fuck. There's just something so good about saying fuck. Yeah, there is. There she is. Oh, yeah, yeah, Any- yeah, yeah. <laughs> always is. Anything you noticed during the week that kind of made you go, "What the fuck"? Um, one of the things I noticed was um, when Liam and um, he chose was it Millie? Millie, yeah. He went yeah. in for a kiss and she put the cheek out, and I was just about like, "What the fuck?" But. That wasn't what we were going to talk about right now, though, is it? No, it's not. That is I, not what we were going to talk about. What was your what the fuck? That's, that's, that's not, not as big about. a what the fuck as this one now. The, the food challenge, Anton. They do it every year. They change the title every year. This one this year was called Spit the Roast. Yes, I mean, disgusting. I, first of all, I would like to say... Why is it that the guys get to put it in the girls' mouths? Why can't, like, if I was a girl, I'd be like, ah, come on, give me a shot. Why, why is it all coming over to me? <laughs> yeah, uh, to be fair, it's definitely worse that way, isn't it? Like, yeah. obviously, once you get it passed in your mouth, it's horrible. But um, it was bad enough the way we did it because I think that my one, we had, like, um, blue cheese and we had to eat, like, a full block of, blue cheese as well it was just oh it was horrible I think there was that scene I was actually like 
bulking so badly and like crying from it it was just disgusting oh my god no i would i don't know how the girls did it i would definitely throw up like i would actually have to be like mm, just stop for a second um and also what like like if it was the other way around anton what food would you like in your mouth <laughs> that's a great question <laughs> um <laughs> I don't actually know something that actually tastes nice, uh, but I, I suppose what being in another person's mouth, it's just horrible texture anyway, isn't it? Yeah, no, it is. Like, but I was thinking the one thing like, I can't think of what I would like, but what I would not like is something like mustard or ketchup, because I saw Toby and he squirted it right into uh, into Chloe's mouth, and it was disgusting. Yeah, I think anything liquidy would just be horrible getting passed over as well. Mm. But let's face it, anything just is. It's just not nice. It's just a horrible challenge, that one. Um, it's just not nice at all. Do you know what? I used to always say to the challenge team, they, uh, I think they just wanted to make a life's hell. Because yeah. all the challenges <laughs> are either embarrassing or disgusting, one or the other. Yeah, no, they're so <laughs> gross. And, like, that's a really messy challenge. So did you all just run for the showers and try and get in there if you could? <laughs> Yeah, literally. So as soon as you would go back, you always had to do your debriefs. So you would have to do it in the mess you were in. You would have to do your beat chart, obviously, in the mess you're in. So you were still, like, messed up for a good couple of hours after the challenge. Oh, that's so... And then all the food would have dried. Oh, disgusting. Horrible. So we reached out to our Instagram followers during the week to ask them what questions they want to ask you, Anton. We called it Ask Anton. It worked very well. I quite like the name. So, are you ready to answer some of these questions? Let's do it. I'm okay. excited. So, Charlie on Instagram said, we all know you love the gym. Pictures of yourself in the gym. I saw it on your Instagram stories as well. I love that you have a picture of yourself in your gym in Scotland. Yeah. They wanted to know, but what is Oh, that was, my that was my mum. Oh, was Wait it? Wait can I clarify this? <laughs> right, so <laughs> I went to Love Island, right? Yeah. Listen to this, right? I know we're, we're, we're stuck for time, but okay. this is an important story, so I don't yeah. look vain. <laughs> um, basically, I went to Love Island and I left my gym business open and I had people running it. And my mum would obviously just check up and them. So anyway, comes back from Love Island and I walked into my gym and there was these literally life-size photos of me in every corner of my gym. And I went, Mum, what, what is that? And she would say... Son, I just missed you that much. I just had to put pictures up at you in the gym. I was like, for fuck's sake. But that's, that's the honest truth. Well, all but your anyway. Instagram followers are looking at it going, Anton, that's, that's the type of self-love we want to see. Yeah. Yeah, well, no one else loves me, so you uh, talk yourself, I suppose. Look, Lucinda might, okay? <laughs> Hang in there. I'm hanging in, trust me. I'm going to slide in as well. <laughs> do, do. I'm and not look, talking about the DMs. Yeah, but behind the scenes, we'll put together a message <laughs> and you can send it over. <laughs> someone, someone got that. Someone got that. Wait, what? What did I miss? Anyway. <laughs> oh, did you say... Oh, okay. Uh, anyway, ask that on. Ask that on. Charlie on Instagram, we all know you love the gym, but what is your favourite thing to do yeah. in the gym? Legs. Definitely legs. I think there is nothing worse when a guy is muscular on top and has no legs. So yeah, oh, definitely yeah. like that. Fair. You got it. You got to work out the whole body. Okay, Dara on Instagram. He said, 100%. "Do Islanders get preferential treatment, and are the cameras ever off?" Oh, we just kind of answered that, didn't we? Yeah. Um, yeah, we kind of answered that, <laughs> but. I mean, the only time the cameras are off is when you go to the casting villa. Regards to preferential treatment, yeah, yeah, definitely. They, certain people did get that, but yeah. we won't go into it. <laughs> oh, yes. oh. And, yeah. So some big... We're not going that's a whole different ball game. <laughs> oh, no, okay. Yeah, we're not getting into that. <laughs> okay, we'll move on to the next question. Thank you for that one, Dara. Uh, finally, Louise on Facebook, she said, what's the average day like in the villa? So, like, we're seeing in our... It's 24 hours. What happens? Take us yep. through it. Yeah, so obviously lights come on in the morning. You get up. I would tip. Then everyone races for the toilet to see who can go for a shit first. Because <laughs> toilet, literally. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so that, that literally happens. Um, boys' toilets downstairs, girls' toilets upstairs. Um, then 
we would literally just get ready for the day. You would have your chat with the casting producer, and they would just ask, like, what are you doing today? Like, who are you going to talk to? What's the, the plan of action? Do that. I would typically go to the gym, get food, then we'd do our chats. Lunch happens, and lunch is when cameras, they're still on, but it's not getting filmed at that point. Well, it is getting filmed, but you'll never, ever see that. So the staff come in, they put out catering, um, and we just can sit and eat. And again, we're not allowed to talk about storyline at that point. You're not allowed to sit with the boys and girls are kept separate, um, just so you can eat. Uh, then after lunch, probably would either be a challenge or more chats. Then you'd get ready for the night and then just go out there, you know, maybe six, seven o'clock. And sometimes you could be out there till two, three, four in the morning, depending on if uh, there's a recoupling, if um, a new Islander's coming in, if there's a date. All these different things at night would dictate the length of the night. So that was a typical day in the Love Island Villa. And tell us about the time. You're not able to see the time at all, are you? <laughs> Yeah, so like I said earlier, you kind of find ways and means of um, working things out. So we actually, this is going to sound really mental, but we started tracking the sun. <laughs> so wherever the sun was in the day. So we, we could work out that lunch was about 12 or 1 o'clock. So the sun would maybe be coming at that certain angle and covering like the fire pit, for example, and then working its way around. And then there was a time we actually, at the start, the, on the cooker, there was a time, but it was the wrong time. But obviously it would just work as normal in terms of like yes. it would go by the hours. So we used that, but then they found out that we knew that because obviously we're talking about it, they can hear everything we're talking about, and then they turn they turned it off. But so yeah. Why is it such a big deal that you can't see the time? I genuinely don't know. I think it's because, like, if I'm honest, I know this is going to sound really dramatic, but some days they, they just work you. Like, and I mean, when I say work you, like, you've got to remember Love Island, like, turn you, like, have to turn the show around in, like, uh, 24 hours. So they need to get, there's no... Ifs, maybe's or buts, they need to get decent enough footage within that time to, to make a show. So, like I said, some mornings, I think, like, some mornings it was getting light outside. So I think that, I don't know, it's just so that you don't know what yeah. length of time you're doing things from, I think. Yeah, that's a, that makes sense, to be fair. Um, and night times yeah. must be your best part of the day. Is it, is it your favourite part of the day when you can dress up and all just kind of chill out? Oh, do you know what? The nights were so boring. Like, it's really? it's, it's so boring. I'm not going to lie to you. Like, if you ever considered doing Love Island, like, the first maybe two weeks are amazing. You've got the buzz, but it's just so boring. All you're ever doing is talking about the same shit. Yeah. Like, day in, day out, how, how did you get on with them? How was the chat with them? Like, how's your relationship going? Oh, there's a new girl. It was just like so boring then you get you literally got dressed up at night to do nothing you got dressed up tonight to just stand about and have a chat that's oh, that... literally what it was if you actually deep it you just get dressed up to go and have a chat with your mates that you could have had the same chat with in bed anyway that's but so boring and well, you're not like drink are you no you're allowed two drinks and um, two drinks a, a night that's it and i've heard of islanders <laughs> sneaking an extra drink here and there yeah, you would get you could get a drinking ban if you drank someone else's drink, or um, yeah, sometimes like the runners would like because you would go into the hut where the front, where the kitchen is. There's a door that opens, yeah, and they would leave your drinks out for you. But we'd maybe go in like quickly before and drink one, and then just tell the runner, "Oh, there wasn't enough drinks," and you'd maybe get more. But if you got caught, you were you would oh, be on a drinking ban. Oh, in trouble! That I actually find all those behind yeah, the scenes secrets. for sure. So interesting. I think everyone does as well. Anton, thank you so much for being here today. Yep. Um, we'll be back next week with Casa Spin uh, with the Laser and Skin Clinic, award-winning experts in the field of aesthetics and body treatments. Anton, it's been a pleasure. See you next week. <laughs>